every single day, more and more new terminal software supports colored output. Whether it's a system monitor, a regex tool, a dictionary, or anything in between. And sure, you can argue that I just want to use the old tools because the old tools are going to be on every single system. And that's totally fine. But for someone who just uses a desktop system, they're not constantly SSHing into other servers, this is a really, really great change. We're not using monochrome terminals anymore. We should at least take advantage of some 90s tech. Now, at least from my understanding, there is no fully agreed upon list about all of these standards for building terminal software. But what you'll notice is there's a lot of things that are sort of de facto standards, things like having a man page or a dash H option to see the documentation, a dash V or dash capital V to see the version information, and if you're using a TUI, usually pressing the question mark key will bring up the help pages, the key bindings, and there are certainly tons of others like having the arrow keys and the vim keys to move through interfaces and things like that. But what about for disabling color? Well, I've seen dash dash no dash color. I've seen dash dash no dash ANSI. I've seen dash dash color false. I've seen color equals never, dash dash no color but without the dash in there, dash dash no color diagnostics, color equals BW, and many, many more. But what if there was a standard being worked towards that you probably didn't even know exists and it's been going on for a couple of years? Well, it turns out there is. That standard is the no color environment variable. So is this just a random website that nobody's ever heard of and nobody's ever implemented? Well, not exactly. So there is a relatively long list but what's more important is the applications that actually have implemented it. So we have things like Ansible, the Arduino CLI, Bat, Crony, the official GitHub CLI, Homebrew, Nix, NPM, Pipewire, PyTest, and as you can see, much, much more. But that's just for the applications themselves. What might be more important is the libraries. So if you're using an application built on any of these libraries, it is automatically going to support the no color variable. The idea is very simple. Colored output is not inherently bad. Take an application like say BTOP for example. I find that having color in here is a massive improvement. It makes it really, really easy to read what's going on in the application. It makes it really easy to distinguish what is going on between the different interfaces. And for things like the process monitor here, when something is using up more of the CPU, it is given a different color to indicate that is the case. But that's just the way that I feel about it. Maybe for someone else though, they find the colors distracting and would much prefer a monochrome output. Now, BTOP is a fairly bad example for this because there are ways to disable the color but there are countless applications out there with colored output where you can't disable it. And obviously for those people, that would be really, really annoying. I think we can both agree though, that if you want color in your output, it should probably be up to the user of the software and not the author of the software. So no color would basically act as a global default. In my case, I would always have it disabled because I generally want color in my applications. And then if an application needs to have color or wants to have color in certain cases, it could have local override options that skip over what the variable is saying. Now you may be thinking, if you don't want to have color in your terminal apps, why don't you just get rid of the terminal's ability to show color? And this is mentioned in the frequently asked questions. Why not just set the term variable to dumb or x term without color support? Or change all color definitions in the terminal to print the same color. So basically, this would be changing your terminal's theme to just be black and white and no other colors. The terminal is capable of color and should be able to print color when instructed. No color is a hint to the software running in the terminal to suppress the addition of color, not to the terminal to prevent any color being shown. The issue with going with this solution is it would make it so you can't have local overrides in the applications if for whatever reason you want to use it. The other problem is the term variable is used for other functionality and modifying it might modify the way that certain applications work. Or if you're using something like Alacrity, it just won't care. And applications keep using their color, nothing really happens. With all that in mind, not every single developer agrees this is the best approach. One in particular being the developer of the Silver Searcher, which is basically like a, a replacement for grep. When they received a pull request to add in this feature, 
Basically, what they said is no, not going to happen, and also posted a response over on Hacker News. I'll leave the full response in the description down below. But in short, it says this would require every command line tool to add support for the environment variable, which isn't that much effort for individual projects, but as a collective is going to be a lot of work. But even if this does become a standard, there are always applications that fall through the cracks, and because those don't respect the variable, that would then annoy people who want to go and use it. My case against that is the XDG desktop folders. This is a standard defining where your application data files go, where the config files go, and things like that. The .config directory is supposed to be controlled by a variable, but you'll see there's a lot of applications that just dump stuff in your home folder or literally hard code .config and don't care whatever it is set to. Even if there is a global standard that almost everyone agrees with, not just in tech and Linux, but basically any space, there is always going to be someone who wants to do something different. I don't really think that's a case against trying to build a standard that would positively affect most things. Most of the second point is sort of misunderstanding what was being said, but this final question here actually is really, really important. Are users supposed to unset no color before running those programs they actually do want color with? Assuming the app doesn't have local override options, that's sort of the biggest problem with having an environment variable. They're not as easy to set and unset as just having a no color option. But there is an alternative solution mentioned here that right now, I don't think anybody is working on. Instead of worrying about it at the individual app level and having all of this repeated work, worry about it at the shell or the terminal level. What you could do is if the application being run matches a certain name, let's say it's something like BTOP, for example, you could have the shell or the terminal automatically strip out all of the color characters and instantly make it monochrome without the application having to do anything itself. Now, that's fine and all, but you could have it also strip out certain characters or replace them. I think that's where it could get really, really useful. So there is a lot of applications out there that you can't modify the color scheme, or the way you modify the color scheme is this weird arbitrary proprietary method that doesn't make any sense. So instead of doing that, you could let the application just do its own thing and then have the terminal override whatever it is the application is doing. I think that would be really, really cool. Maybe this exists already, but I've seen so many terminals and I have never seen this feature. If you're a terminal developer out there, let me know if this is something that is, you know, actually viable, actually doable. And if it is, I would like to see it done. That would be super cool. If you didn't know, there is actually another color stripping standard which already exists. It's not for the same use case, but it does strip out the color. So right now, my LS is actually an application called Exa. And it's got all of this color here. It's got all of this formatting here. And it looks really cool when you're running it on your terminal. But obviously, you wouldn't want all of these color characters if you save it to a file. So if I go and do LS and then send it to a file, what you'll notice is none of those color characters are actually there. It also fixes up the formatting and puts one thing on every line. So what is actually happening here is when you redirect from the application, it checks where the output is being sent to. If it is a TTY, it'll have the color, have the formatting, all of that stuff. If it is being sent to a pipe or a file though, well, get rid of it because that's obviously not going to be useful. This is one of those standards that became a standard without anybody trying to direct it. Everybody just agreed implicitly that this was a good idea and then made it happen. You might not think this, but building a new standard is incredibly easy. I'm going to do one right now. Every single program to get rid of color should have an option called color is cringe. The hard thing about a standard though is getting a standard adopted. I really enjoy making videos like this and digging into things that nobody else cares about. There's actually another standard I want to cover about image output in the terminal as well. So maybe that'll happen. I don't know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like colored output in your terminal or do you want to see everything be monochrome? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribe, Stone and Barrow Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.